Throughout the pontificate of John Paul II, the Church witnessed mass apostasy. An even more painful fact is that under his leadership, the Church was disintegrated from within. The main cause was violation of the saving faith by the spirit of atheism through the historical critical method and by the spirit of idolatry through the apostatical gesture in Assisi. The Church thus fell into apostasy. The Holy Spirit was cast out by the spirit of apostasy from church offices, seminaries and monasteries. The apostatic ecclesiastical structure got under the sway of the spirit of Antichrist. A visible manifestation of terrible apostasy sheltered by the authority of John Paul II was the perversion of pedophilia. Any sincere person would ask, for what reason actually was John Paul II beatified? Statistics from the United States show 4,392 diocesan and religious priests were accused of pedophilia and homosexuality by 2002. 3,280 accusations were brought against priests between 2004 and 2007. The financial costs of the Catholic Church in the United States to compensate for the crimes of pedophilia committed by the clergy amounted to $2 billion. Five dioceses declared bankruptcy because of these scandalous crimes. Pedophile priest Murphy was responsible for 200 cases of pedophilia in an institute for deaf children. He was not punished at all. Hundreds of children became victims of sexual abuse in the Boston Archdiocese. The scandalous revelations were made in January 2002. The biggest shock was that the church leaders knew about it. For example, John Giogan, a priest in the Boston Archdiocese, sexually abused more than 100 boys. The Church secretly paid over $1.3 billion to reduce the victims to silence. Pedophilic scandals occurred not only in the United States, but also in Australia and Europe. For example, Rick Deville, a priest from Belgium, says, None of the priests accused in more than 300 cases of pedophilia that occurred in the 1990s was punished. The priest who was repeatedly convicted of abusing children, was only transferred to another region where he continued to practice this perversion. Great Britain 21 priests were accused of sexual child abuse in the United Kingdom in the years 1995 to 1999. Ireland Sean Fortune, a Catholic priest, sexually abused dozens of boys. The fact that he practiced pedophilia was known already in the seminary. Nevertheless, he was ordained. Archdiocese of Dublin in the years 1975 to 2004 suppressed the information that its priests sexually abused children. It concerned 46 priests. In Ireland, the church hierarchy bribed or influenced the courts and police. This was evidenced by the Prime Minister of Ireland. The victims were not heard. In some cases, they were even intimidated. The culprits were not punished. The victims were treated with contempt and cold indifference. John Paul II was fully informed about everything. He was responsible for the injustices and crimes that were perpetrated on innocent children. But he was also responsible for the souls of the priests entrusted to him, whom he left in mortal sin and thus let them follow the way to perdition. He caused profound indignation among both believers and unbelievers. If it was revealed in a secular institution that, for example, the headmaster covered up a single pedophile crime of a teacher, he would be removed from office and punished. John Paul II, however, was hastily beatified for his many years of covering thousands of homosexual and pedophile scandals. What hypocrisy! that in countless promotional materials, in films and photographs, John Paul II was displayed taking the little ones in his arms, bending over babies. 
while he concealed ruthless crimes committed against innocent children. So what for was John Paul II beatified? Perhaps for his great popularity? If popularity is a sign of holiness, all idols of the public like Michael Jackson, John Lennon, Jimi Hendrix or others can also be hastily beatified. But what does the word of God say? Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. So what for was John Paul II beatified? For his unity with the Masons? On the 22nd of March 1982, John Paul II received Bonnet Brit, Masonic Lodge of New York, and called its members My Dear Friends. In December 1996, the Grand Lodge of the Orient offered to John Paul II its highest award, the Order of Galilee, as an expression of gratitude for his efforts in promoting Masonic ideals. No wonder the Pope's syncretistic views were entirely consistent with Masonic ideas. Moreover, John Paul II abolished the Latte Sententia penalty of excommunication in the Code of Canon Law for membership of Catholics in Masonic lodges. The essence of Freemasonry is a rebellion against the Triune God, dedication to Satan and service to Him. In fact, the Pope does allow the Masons to hold senior positions within the Catholic Church with impunity and effectively develop their destructive activities. The question is whether the beatification cause was not accelerated right by these dear friends of his. So what was the reason for pseudo-beatification of John Paul II? Perhaps the fact that during the papacy of John Paul II the heresies of historical critical theology became the official doctrine at theological faculties and in seminaries. Historical critical theology denies the fundamentals of the Christian faith, the divinity of Christ and the inspiration of scripture. To elevate it to the level of church doctrine is a betrayal of Christ. So what for was John Paul II beatified? Perhaps for his pseudo-peace efforts such as prayers with pagans in Assisi, the real aim of which was to change the thinking of Catholic believers and to open the Church to the spirit of apostasy. John Paul II was the main inspirer and director of the 1986 Assisi meeting. At the beginning, he extended a cordial welcome to each representative of a false religion, Buddhists, Hindus, animists, Muslims, Shintoists, Native Americans, Zoroastrians, shamans. At the Pope's instigation, all the crosses were removed and those that could not be removed were covered. Then he put the Christian churches at the disposal of the pagans. There they performed their rites during which they invoked demons. For example, Buddhists repeated mantras in St. Peter's Church in Assisi. They placed the idol of Buddha on the tabernacle. So-called prayers were uttered here in common too. John Paul II suggestively uttered a heresy that we have one father with the pagans and therefore he closed the meeting with the prayer Our Father. Thereafter, these syncretistic meetings were held in different cities every year. He was personally present again at the meeting in Assisi in 2002. Also on many other occasions, John Paul II confirmed his syncretistic gesture of Assisi. He thus put the Christian faith on an equal footing with pagan religions, set out a line of apostasy from Christ and his gospel, and opened the whole church to a curse. The gesture of Assisi is contrary to the Holy Scripture, the spirit of the Gospel and the whole tradition of the Apostles, Church Fathers, Martyrs and Saints. If in the first centuries of cruel persecution of Christians, the early Christian martyrs had held common peace prayers with pagans instead of being faithful to Christ, they would not be venerated as saints but denounced 
as traitors. How is it possible that John Paul II was beatified if he had committed a manifest betrayal of Christ? His beatification was a gesture of spitting on all martyrs who preferred to go to death rather than betray Christ and live in peace with pagans. What does the Holy Scripture say as to Assisi? What pagans sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. The spirit of Assisi presents paganism as an alternative way to salvation. But then Christ's death on the cross was in vain, and God is degraded to the level of demons. The words of the scripture apply to John Paul II. Whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord. Wasn't the Pope's strange disease a visible punishment from God for cordial embraces between him as head of the church and those who officially serve the devil? If we were to follow the so-called heroic virtues of John Paul II, it would mean that all priests should remove the crosses from the churches and invite Hindus, Buddhists, animists and Satanists to invoke demons there. Parishioners should actively participate in pagan rituals and call them prayers for peace. Unfortunately, thanks to John Paul II, many priests already follow this way of apostasy, leading along deceived Catholics without the slightest remorse. Following the example of John Paul II, we should revere the Dalai Lama, who considers himself a reincarnated god that is a demon. Lamas, however, do not allow the gospel to be preached on their territory, and they severely persecute Christians. Furthermore, we should kiss the Quran, which denies the divinity of Christ, attend mosques, and fully open up to the current invasion of paganism on the Christian territory. We should also have our foreheads marked by pagan priestesses as a public sign of apostasy from Christ and venerate the monuments of gurus. We should also enter into a symbiotic relationship between Christianity and Freemasonry, but all this is an abominable betrayal of Christ and of the Gospel. So, if through the false beatification John Paul II is said to us as a model to follow, we enter upon the path of apostasy which ends in hell. By the false beatification, Pope Benedict XVI elevated the spirit of Assisi, the spirit of Antichrist, to the altar of the Church. He dragged the whole Catholic Church into apostasy and cast out the Holy Spirit from her. Thereby he excommunicated himself from the Church. As from the 1st of May 2011, the Church is in a saddest vacant state. The Papal See is vacant. The Pope, an apostate, now occupies the papal office illegally. Therefore every bishop and every priest is obliged no later than the Feast of Pentecost, the 12th of June 2011, to publicly renounce the spirit of Assisi, the spirit of Antichrist, and to stop mentioning the name of the apostate Pope in the liturgy. Unless a bishop or priest does so, he makes it manifest that he remains in unity with the spirit of Antichrist and, as from the 13th of June 2011, he publicly excludes himself from the Church and, as an apostate, celebrates Holy Mass invalidly. The Mass celebrated by him is then a mere pious spectacle and an insult to our Saviour. Whoever from among the bishops, priests, or believers will not separate himself from the apostate Benedict remains under God's curse anathema. Every priest is obliged in conscience to obey God rather than traitors of Christ. Liturgy will be celebrated validly only by those priests who will dissociate themselves from the spirit of Assisi, the spirit of Antichrist. We also ask the believers to encourage their bishops through personal letters by the Feast of Pentecost to make this step of repentance 
renounce the spirit of Assisi, stop mentioning the name of the apostate Pope in the liturgy, and thus to return to our Lord Jesus Christ. By this step, they will save their diocese for Christ.